Hello everyone, we are back. It's episode number three of the England Let's Play and the great news is today it's the knockout stages. This would have been a very awkward series if I just got knocked out in the group stage, but that's not happened and today's opposition is not a team I expect to make it to the knockout stages of the actual Euros. Are they going to keep their fairy tale going or are we just going to crush them and smush them into the ground? I'm going to hope it's the latter. Let's get into this. So the team that I was alluding to in the intro of today's video is today's opposition. It's North Macedonia. I say Macedonia, not Macedonia. I know this stirs up a debate every time. Macedonia is the Latin way of saying it. Macedonia is the Greek way of saying it. So depending on where you're from, there isn't really a right or wrong pronunciation. The Romans called it Macedonia. The uh, the Greeks called it Macedonia before that. Look, let's just agree. They've got a lovely flag. Can we all agree? I think we can all agree on that. Yes, they've got Pandev as their captain. He's getting on a little bit, the 37-year-old. And as I've already alluded to, I do feel like it's a little bit of a footballing miracle they've made it this far. They've done well in their group. That there is no denying. They haven't lost yet in the European Championships. They drew 1-1 against Ukraine and against Austria. And then they beat the Netherlands 2-0. An absolutely insane result. And while interesting to note, they are playing a 3-5-2, a 5-3-2. I guess it depends on how attacking the wing-backs are as to what shape it really lines up as. All I know is they're very good at FMing teams. And this is the kind of team that I have to be a little bit scared of today. So as I was doing the prep for this game against North Macedonia, I uncovered a few little things that I think we can use to our advantage. The first thing really being is they're not very good at goal scoring. If we just have a look at their attacking efficiency, they have on average six shots a match and their conversion rate is it's pretty good to be fair. It's not quite Hungary good where Hungary have scored 33% of the shots they've had, but it is definitely up there. But the big issue really, I think for them is defensively. They've got four so far, dare I say. They faced a lot of shots, but they've only conceded three. So that's the real big challenge to try and break down this back five. And you might wonder, well, how are we going to do that? I've had a look at the team. I've had a look at where, you know, the assists have come against them. And uh, as you can see here, it does look like the left side of the pitch for them is perhaps an area of weakness. You know, maybe we can get in behind on the overlaps, especially with them only having kind of a singular wing back. And uh, well, with that in mind, we are going to change some stuff up going into this game. I have got to be wary of the counter attack. I've got to show them a degree of respect. But at the same time, I do think the wing backs overlapping is going to be pretty important to breaking them down in the wide areas. Now, for today's game, I was originally going to play Jack Grealish um, out on the left hand side, but he is still struggling a little bit fitness wise. You can see here his condition. Not exactly ideal. So with that in mind, I've made the executive decision to bring back in Jadon Sancho. I feel like his pace and his ability to run at players in the wide area is going to be really important for us. Elsewhere, I'm going to give Raheem Sterling the start on the right-hand side. Not giving him nearly enough opportunities, really. The rest of the team, though, kind of picks itself. The one exception being a mistake I've made here. Harry Maguire is not starting. I'm sorry, we brought him on last episode and we conceded two goals against the Czechs. He, he's had his chance, he's had multiple chances, he's let me down repeatedly. As a result, tomorrow he's going to come back in alongside John Stones. Looking at the Macedonia squad here, you can see that really, they've not done anything special. And actually, it's been Bardi who's been their star man so far this competition. He has got a goal and an assist to his name, a 7.23 rating, but he is currently wrestling with an injury in the center of the midfield. So he's a man we've got to be a little bit wary of. Higher up the field, you can see that Pandev has grabbed two goals. Of course, uh, I feel like he's the kind of player who we should be dealing with pretty well. One of the concerns I'd have with playing someone like Harry Maguire is pacey forwards getting in behind. I don't think Pandev is going to be causing Tomori too much issue when it comes to pace in behind. The other striker who I'm not going to try and say because I'll say it wrong, I'm just going to call him Ilya. That's easier for all of us, isn't it? Uh, he's a very determined individual. A nomadic striker is the media description. To be fair, he looks pretty well-rounded, so maybe he's the man to be slightly more wary of. But you can see, on the whole... They've maybe been a bit fortuitous to get as far as they've got. They've not faced a, a real challenge, I don't want to say just yet. I noticed that the Netherlands did rotate their team taking on Macedonia, knowing that actually they were already through. It was a chance, like we did against the Czechs, to really rest things up. 
With that in mind, I did, as I already mentioned, note that the fact that on their left-hand side, they're a little bit weak defensively. They've had a couple of assists from the right, a couple of assists from the left against them. Alyovsky is definitely a man I think we can target, particularly if he is having to play the left wing-back position for them. Elmas alongside him as well isn't the most offensive of players in the left centre mid position, so I am looking at that right-hand side to be an area that we can really look to exploit, to the point where I'm actually thinking that maybe I'll play Mount as a Mazar in this game. Look for him to find a few channels of space. Of course, playing against three centre-backs, there's not going to be as many channels for Mount to attack into, but I think there is a, a gap to be found between the wing-back and between the centre-back that perhaps he can look to exploit here. So anyway, the team is rested, the team is selected. This is the, the squad that gets the nod. Calvert-Lewin, again, I, I couldn't quite pick him over Kane. Kane had a really good you know, game uh, last episode against Scotland, and whilst Calvert-Lewin did superb... Ultimately, I don't feel like Kane's done enough to justify dropping him just yet. Anyway, let's get into this. This is the first knockout round against Macedonia. Hopefully, we're going to get a good result here. Uh, Steve Holland is our assistant manager, for people wondering. I love Steve Holland. He's been a great lad, although no one's reacted to the team talk. I've tried to be this inspiring leader. I've read books on leadership and the psychology of footballers. This is the reaction I get. I feel like they're just all smiling and nodding their heads at me. They don't give a Scooby-Doo what I tell them. Let's hope they give a Scooby-Doo about the performance on the pitch. We need to turn up here. This is now do or die. So I realised one thing that I haven't really talked about with this series is the fact that from the knockouts onwards, it's just going to be a single game per episode. That means that the episodes may end up being a little bit shorter, but at the same time, I think it just suits the purpose a little bit more uh, from previous experience of doing internationals. I'm hoping, of course, this is going to be the first of many knockout games we get to partake in. And I'd be lying if I was to say that when I saw the draw... I didn't pump my fist a little bit. I was quite happy about this tie against Macedonia, even if they have caused a few upsets. Anyway, the big ball is lumped forward here, but John Stones is going to read it well and lay it off to Tamori. You can see they are happy to sit so, so deep and try and spring the counter-attack. And whilst we're perhaps playing into their hands a little bit by having the wing-backs look for the overlap, uh, ultimately... I'm hoping that if we can keep hold of the ball and just dominate it, we're never going to give them the opportunity to hit them on the break. You can see already the space we're finding in behind. Sancho does really well to keep it in. Luke Shaw, options at the back post. Raheem Sterling's there, and it's from one wing to the other. And immediately that decision to get the wing backs higher up the pitch seems to be working wonders. I wasn't sure how the wing backs were actually going to kind of act in their system, but you can see here they are kind of getting so far back. Just loads of space afforded for Shaw to get the ball in. Worth noting, Almas, who we talked about, his kind of lack of defensive ability. He's actually playing right centre mid in this game. He was playing left centre mid for the last one. Um, but on that occasion, we were able to just find some space and they afforded us time to get the ball into the box. We've done that. Good little finish. We're scoring a lot of headers so far this competition. I mean, so far, so good. Alyovsky is on a booking and now we've got a corner here. Mason Mount whips it near post. Stones is there. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we've scored another header. We're good at these, and I think now the challenge for Macedonia is where do their two goals come from? They have an average of, I think it was, was it four shots a game? Three shots a match? They don't shoot very often. They don't craft out that many opportunities. And, uh, well, this game is going just about as well as could be hoped for. You can see here, we've not had as much of the ball as I would like. I am actually thinking that in this second half, we'll just keep the passing tempo and everything just a little bit shorter. We can look to work the ball into the box, but out of possession, I'm actually going to tell the players to really slow down here, which I, I know might not be a popular decision, but this is a bit of game management, I feel like. I could keep pressing at 2-0 up, but with the matches we've got coming, it's okay to slow down the pace a little bit. And while Stones has hit the woodwork again, they are not a team who seem to have particularly good headers of the ball. At least when it comes to defending corners, that is. You'd think with three centre-backs, they'd be dealing with that there, but no, they're not. And we're causing them a lot of problems. I'm looking at the bookings they've got for Elmaz and Alyovsky. Definitely compromises their ability to defend. With 20 minutes left, to be fair, we can probably start to make some of our own subs. I'm going to take off Raheem Sterling. You know what? We'll give Calvert-Lewin some game time. Rashford can come on on the right. Uh, Foden as well. You know what? We'll give him a little rest. We'll bring in Bellingham for a triple sub here. Maybe a little bit of disrespect, but I feel I feel like we've got to manage the squad here. We've got to, we've got to be sensible with everything. And oh, we've got a, a free kick here. It's Mason Mount over it. He has 14 free kick taken. 
And that is a very, very good free kick, if I might say so myself. 17 minutes left, three goals up, looking very good defensively. I can't quite claim that the, the decision to play Mason Mount as a Mazala has contributed to that, really. But uh, nevertheless, I feel like the changes and the tweaks we've made in this game have worked well. And whilst, obviously, we're expecting to win this kind of game, as, you know, we absolutely should be winning it, I'm pretty impressed by the the manner in which we're doing it at the moment it's been very very convincing they have done absolutely nothing going forward i mean you can see their game plan here as you pause it they are happy to have their back five just sit so deep just as a back five i, I imagine they're not even playing as complete wing backs they are playing as kind of wing backs on defend i mentioned earlier when talking about their tactic you could look at it as a 352 or a 532 it's definitely a 532 here I mean, there's just so much space to be crafted out here. Looks like they're leaving Pandev, or at least one of their strikers, up top on his own. Unless that's Pandev dropping in deep. It actually is, with Trikovsky playing up top. But there's just none, none of the ball. We're not turning over the ball in bad areas here. Of course, if we lost the ball here, it could be quite compromising. But we're using that space out wide. We're getting the ball into the box, and it, it's worked absolute wonders in this game. A few little tweaks. I think they've worked very nicely. And to be honest, this game... It's been as plain sailing as plain sailing could be. I think the only disappointment really is we've probably not created more opportunities from our dominance with the ball in the wide areas. Again, you can see here, just a two-on-one for the wing-back. Alyovsky fouls. I mean, he's going to be off now. The game plan's been executed. It's worked wonders. And whilst it is against a lesser opposition, it does give me a little bit of confidence that as we go into bigger games, I can perhaps look to identify areas to exploit of opposition in a similar effect to this one. Didn't, as I said, create as much as I would like. Mason Mount did end up getting man of the match, so maybe the role change was a smart move. The entire defence had a superb game. Of course, the four players who came on didn't really do a lot between them after they came on, um, but just looking at the stats here, they, they, I mean, they had chances as the game went on, but we weren't shown them as highlights. I'm going to assume they were probably fairly speculative efforts. I guess from my point of view, the only concerning thing is we didn't create a little bit more, but of course we did slow down the tempo and really just game manage things as the second half cracked on, which I think we can look at now and say that was the right decision. We've knocked out North Macedonia. Unfortunately for us, France are still in it and France are the team that I am most fearful of. So I didn't actually realise this, but we were the first team to play our kind of first knockout round, which is probably pretty good from a rotation point of view as we reach the latter stages. I have got a comment question of the day. If you've got until the end of this video, pro prove it, prove it, leave a comment. Let me know who you think of all these teams is going to be the team in this simulation that wins the Euros. Can I win it with England? Will it be France? Will it be Spain? Will it be Portugal? I mean, you can see the team name. I'm not going to read them all off. They're here. Pick a team, back them. Come the final episode of this series, we'll find out who was right and who was wrong. Maybe I'll give an honorary shout out to anyone who got it correct down in the comments of this video. Anyway, that is going to wrap up things from me today. We'll leave the suspense of who our next opposition is till next time. Next episode, it is the quarterfinals, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, this is if it's not the quarterfinals, this is going to be very awkward now. I can't give it's the quarter it is the quarter. I never doubt with myself. It's the quarterfinals next time. Three matches from greatness. Who are we gonna be playing? Are we gonna be able to make it through? You'll have to tune in next time to find out. Thank you for your support on this series. If you've enjoyed the video, do drop a like on it. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.